I've watched a lot of dueling book videos and a lot of tournaments on GOAT format, and I've never seen Manticore of Darkness played, which is strange to me because it has a decent effect and decent stats. So if that's the case, why does it not see any play? Well, let's go over the card quickly and uh, find out. So I have the card in front of me, and it's a fire attribute card. Yes, the uh, Manticore of Darkness is a fire attribute, for what reason I don't know. It requires a tribute to summon, and it has 2300 attack. So to me, this says that it can get over most eaters in the format, like Ani Parshaf and Berserk Gorilla. However, saying that, it, things get a little bit worse when we go to the defense. 1000 is not very good. Uh, 1100 is the premium. Uh, this is because it can stand up to Tsukiyomi and not die. A lot of good cards actually die to Tsukiyomi because they do not have that 1100 defense. And uh, when I compare this card to other cards, the card that immediately comes to mind is Vampire Lord. And they're very similar in a lot of ways. But it's only after looking at Vampire Lord that you get to see why Manticore perhaps doesn't see as much play as its zombie counterpart. Uh, for a starter, with Vampire Lord, it's got that much more favourable attributing. Fire attribute is probably the worst in the game. Light and Dark are obviously the best uh, for Chaos Synergy, and that is exactly what Vampire Lord has. Additionally, Vampire Lord is searchable via Pyramid Turtle which in turn is searchable via Giant Rat, and then of course both of them are searchable by Sangan. Manticore on the other hand, doesn't have that luxury at all, you just have to draw it. Vampire Lord's uh, revival effect also does not require you to have any certain prerequisite in your hand, you can just revive it as soon as it's destroyed by an effect. And if that is not enough insult for injury, Vampire Lord also has 1500 defense. Poor Manticore of Darkness. Can't even beat it in that regard. What's even worse is that Vampire Lord can be run in pretty much anything, whereas Manticore of Darkness forces you to run Beast Monsters, which you wouldn't necessarily want to use, so not only does Manticore of Darkness have all these weaknesses, but he also impacts your deck building. But having said that, there are some things that Manticore can do slightly better than Vampire Lord. Now, 2300 attack does not make too much of a difference. It can get over Berserk Gorilla, whereas uh, Vampire Lord simply breaks even. And if you are in that rare situation where your uh, opponent is running Zombira the Dark, then Vampire Lord just uh, straight up loses. However, having said that, the biggest reason you'd probably want to play Manticore is its special trick, and by that I mean the Manticore Loop. So if you don't know what that is, the Manticore Loop is where you have just happen to have two Manticore of Darknesses. Uh, one of them has been sent to the graveyard this turn, and you have Card of Safe Return activated on the field. From there, you can send one beast to the graveyard, summon out your Manticore of Darkness, and then send that Manticore of Darkness to the graveyard to special summon out the other copy that you just discarded, and then repeat the process until you draw as many cards as you want, probably a full hand. I also think there's something to be said about the surprise factor. I mean, as soon as someone sees a Pyramid Turtle, they're gonna think that you're gonna be running a Vampire Lord or some sort of uh, zombie deck. However, the moment you start running the Zoo and Berserk Gorilla with Card of Safe Return, people will have no idea what you're about to play. Uh, I had a match with Scully not too long ago, which I will end with, uh, where he was completely taken aback by Manticore of Darkness, um, and it ended up probably winning me the game. Maybe, probably not, I mean he was streaming at the same time, I know he was distracted. The Manticore of Darkness deck is a lot of fun. The way I run it is basically Zoo, but with Card of Safe Return, uh, so it's nothing too innovative. However, the Nano has made an absolutely fantastic deck, which is completely dedicated to Manticore of Darkness and has a lot of synergies with the card itself. As you can see on screen, uh, we have three copies of Card of Safe Return and the two copies of Manticore, as you would expect. I would argue that actually Manticore can't really be played unless you have Card of Safe Return, they kind of go hand in hand. 
but also you can see that you've got a lot of other cards that work well with card safe return, like Premature Burial and what works well with Premature Burial, Try and True Nade. What works well with Giant True Nade is Big Bang Shot. What else works with Premature Burial? We've got Abyss Soldier. And then to discard with Abyss Soldier, we have the Mother Grizzly, which can also be discarded for Manticore of Darkness. And then the Iron Blacksmith can search out the Premature Burial. It's all linked and it's so much fun and there's so much uh, weird synergies in the deck. If you're looking for a new experience in Go format and you're tired of playing the same decks, I cannot recommend this deck enough. It is just so much fun. In the end, though, I don't think I can really justify running Manticore over something more meta, if you like, if you want to win a tournament or such. Having said that, this isn't the kind of fun deck that is, you know, like Dark Magician where it's fun but completely non-viable. No, this is fun because of the game mechanics and it can actually pull a game or two. As long as you have some sort of experience in the game, you should be okay to play this deck, and I highly recommend it, as I said. Um, but with that said, I'm going to end with a stream highlight from Scully's stream, uh, where I played him for the first time, actually. I think that's the first ever game I had against Scully, where I played Manticore of Darkness. And he was playing Heavy Slump, and it's not, it's not a great... Uh, showcase of the deck however it was a lot of fun and it is funny to see scully's surprised reaction so i'll leave you with that yeah tim i don't know what any of those cards that you're talking about are So like 2015, like maybe not 2015, maybe 2017. I knew a lot of the card pool because I was helping Jazz with his um with his custom format. So I looked through like every card to see what would work good in it for a Nova format. Yeah, I don't know if Zoo is a bad match or just getting Duo turn one so far is a bad match. Bazoo has done good every time he's been on the screen. Card a safe return with Twin Headed. Is this Zoo or <laughs> what the heck are we looking at? Manicore deck? Oh yeah, I guess that could be it. Holy crap. Definitely a lot of monsters.
Great. <laughs> I drew a thunder dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he will have eight. I almost don't want to discard Slump just because I'm afraid he's going to like, oh, his MST is gone. He shouldn't have anything. Ah, <laughs> did I count wrong? What the heck? What do you do? Discard for mana core? Was Manicor sent to the grave last turn? During the end phase of the turn, this card was sent to the graveyard. You can send... From card destruction, is that what it was? Yeah, I didn't even think about it. And I thought that game was a wrap. <laughs> I actually lost to Manicor, a stupid effect too. What was I gonna ring for game? I was at 4,000. He had 3K? <laughs> uh, you know what, I guess I got so thrown off by that whole thing I didn't even realize the life points.
Yeah, he was, I'm pretty sure he was not at 3,000. I should have said jar there. Yeah, that last game was a mess. <laughs> 